And if you're new here and you're like, what is she doing with this tape? So I lay this tape down on my table like this, and then I take my letters, and I place them on the tape so that way I can paint them without it getting too messy. Normally I have two inch tape, this is only one and a half inch, but it still will do the trick. so far away. I think I'm going to have to move it over. I thought we would come in with the crab first and then we'll do everything else after that. Look at all that white paint sitting right there. Let's get rid of that first. No paint left behind. Flamingo coral. One of my favorite colors to paint with. vacation. My kids have been so awesome today. We did lunch. Oh yeah. It was okay. Lori's not feeling very good, you guys. It's so bummed. I hate when she doesn't feel good. Um, I fed my kids lunch before we came on. And I'm actually sticking to like a schedule this time this summer because that way I don't get overwhelmed with keeping them busy and stuff, so we're sticking to like a fun little summer schedule. 
and so far so good. I'm pretty excited. Today's and like right now is like quiet time. So I let him play outside all morning long so he gets to play outside in the morning before it gets too hot. And then at lunchtime they come in and then after lunch it's quiet time. So that way if I wanted to paint or record videos for the groups or anything like that, I can do it at that time instead of being like, oh no, it's already three o'clock, I need to record this. And then they're already like, well, we want to go do something. So kind of nice to get on a summer schedule while they're home and and get up extra early and get some work done before they wake up and stuff. So that's always nice too. So our weekend was okay. Yeah. Today's Joe's birthday. He wants tacos for dinner, so I gotta go to the grocery store soon. Go get some ground beef and some taco seasoning. I love this flamingo coral color. Isn't this really pretty? And I'm so glad I painted the crab white first because that just helps that paint just come through a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and get some on these sides where this white is showing too. Um, just in case. That way there's no white showing. You want tacos? Come on over. I made some super cute signs too and Lori approved them so I will get them listed today for you guys. They are so cute. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but they're pretty cute. So. Oh, honk your horn because it's too hard to get out of the car to go pick her up. I love these signs. I have a hard time deciding what colors to paint them. I know, me too. So sometimes I like sit on it and I look at it for like two days before I do anything. Um, and then I figure out what I want to, how I want to paint it. So I've totally been there before. But once you get an idea, I say go for it. Don't even try to change it. Just when you get, when you have a vision in your head, you just go with your gut. Sometimes you, you can also, like I've done this before, so like if I know that there's a door hanger that Lori's sending me, I can get the picture and I can go on to Procreate and I can color it and design it that way too before I even paint it, which I really enjoy doing that. I've done that a few times for projects. Um, if you guys remember our sunset one, that was one that I did that with. And I matched the colors up to the paint that I had so I knew exactly what paint colors I could use and then basically how I painted it on Procreate or on, yeah, well it was Procreate. How I painted it on Procreate is what I end up transferring over. Which that's really fun to do too. So you can always do that. Color it like a coloring page first and then paint it. This color here is Paradise, no, Atlantis. Atlantis. Everything is Apple Barrel from Walmart today. Time for some new brushes. This brush is on its last leg. I can already see it. 
I've had to buy like a bunch of these because they're my favorite brushes, especially for letters. in July kit. I do a turquoise one. Turquoise and red. And then August should be like fall. Oh, I love Halloween too. Oh my gosh, I have some really cute Halloween signs. I can't wait. I'll show you guys. I will list them here after I'm done with this live and um yeah, they are so cute. There's some cute candy corn ones. Um, there might be a witch one in there. Some pumpkins. There's some cute ones. Yes, we do do things easier to paint in 3D. The less, yes, the letters are all separate from the base. So everything can be done individually, it just makes it so much easier to paint. All skill level required. Basically, if you know how to hold a paintbrush, how to load a paintbrush, you can paint any one of these signs. You don't even have to use a paintbrush. You could pretty much use a roller and a sponge for all these little hangers. And you can make it as fancy and as non-fancy as you want. Like the background on this one, we could have done like a sunset background if we really wanted to. I want to leave it white though because I thought it would look better with these colors popping through. No, not on this one. We do have some that come with paint and a brush, but this one is not one of those kit, full kits. This is just the door hanger itself, so you just get all the wood pieces and the round. 
And then inside my uh, description, I have a link for brushes for you and I have all the paint colors that I use. So if you wanna follow step by step, you could do that. We have a star kit that comes with the paint right now for 4th of July. That one comes with all the supplies that you need. That's why. This blue is a satin blue. I was trying to figure out why it wasn't soaking into the wood very well. That would be why. It dries fast. Because I am having to really load my brush here. We'll probably have to do another coat of this one, so we'll let this dry after I'm done here. And then we'll go in and do another coat of for the crab. for you. Just wait, you will see. I'm just come back through here one more time. If I can fix any of that. All right. Okay, we'll let that sit. Probably have to come in and do another coat for that, but that's okay. Um, let's go ahead and do these little water droplets. I'm going to grab. Oh. I think I'm going to mix these two colors together to make another blue, so let's try that and see how it looks. So I'm just going to take this blue here and then Atlantis and I'm just going to mix them together and see if it can kind of create like more of like a greenish blue a little bit. Okay. 
kind of pretty. So there's my color. Now you could paint these whatever color you wanted. If you like the Alanis or if you like that dark blue and that's what you're, you want your water to look like, have at it. I kind of just like to pull both colors together a little bit more. Pretty, right? And it gets that, you can see both colors just kind of fill in there. Being very careful not to overload my brush here. crab one more time. Now remember I used blue paint so I want to make sure this brush is super clean because blue when you get it wet in the water it likes to kind of transfer easily and I whenever I do it at least so I want to make sure you clean your brush really good before you dive back in to a lighter color than blue. Red does the same thing um, just sometimes they just don't rinse very well. I'm coming in with a smaller brush this time. Just really going to get this body here. Cover up any imperfections I have. This covered really nicely. I did do the white coat on the bottom of this, so it did cover really nicely in the beginning because of that white coat. Now, normally, if you don't do white base coat, you will have to expect to do multiple coats with your lighter colors. And sometimes your darker colors too. Sometimes you that white just or that wood just peeks through it or it just soaks right into it. So sometimes you will have to do multiple coats. But usually I can get away with two if I do the white base. And I will get his little eyeballs black in just a minute. Okay, he's all good. Black and green too. Black and green? I'm not sure. Oh, to mix black and green together? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what she means. Oh, in the water probably. Black and green, yes. Black too, black. Oh. Every time I, yep, you were totally right. Black does that too. Blue, but these blues, especially this deep navy blue, ooh. Do you guys remember that door hanger we did a couple weeks ago? Um, I think it was the fence with a sunflower and how it got all over the place. I had to... go in with an extra coat on that one to fix it.
Definitely two coats on this one. This one took really good though. Yeah, they don't as well. Yeah. Kind of sucks if they don't rinse well too. Alright, on this one it looks pretty good. I'm gonna come around the edges though with black. So I'm going to grab this here and we're just gonna come around and do these edges black to just make this really pop with the blue. And we're just going to do a little at a time. So I'm just going to start with just a little bit and then we'll just increase as we go. Okay, I'm going to pull my paint towards me. Just getting right here on the edge. Now you could leave this taped if you want to, if you don't trust yourself, and then just work around it. And the edges are already darked for you, but I got white paint everywhere when I was doing my big roller. So I'm gonna come through and cover up those imperfections here. Do you have to do this? No. It looks nice though, especially with that white showing, which it is, so. You can do this with a sharpie too. You don't have to use, or a paint pen. You definitely do not have to do it with a brush. A sharpie might be easier for anyone that ha might not have a steady hand. a regular sharpie and we'll come in here and do the O. I don't have a paint pen I used to I don't know where it went I think it exploded but you can also do it with a sharpie and just come through and basically just color it. You want to make sure that it's all the way dry though because if not you'll ruin your sharpie so make sure it's all the way dry. See that? Nice edge there. Okay, so here's a really good example. See all that white right there? Okay. 
I don't want any of that showing, so we're going to come through and really clean that up here. here on this side. Remember how I said make sure your paint's dry? I just hit some wet paint so hopefully I don't ruin my Sharpie. Now if you paint really gentle Hopefully you don't have to do this because this was technically already done for me, but because I got the white on there and it is pretty noticeable, I want to take care of that because I don't want to try and sell this door hanger with the white all exposed. Okay. And the same thing will continue throughout these. I'm just going to show you one more and then I will do the rest of it off camera because I don't want to keep you guys sitting here watching me do all this. But once you get the hang of it and you know where your line's at and you know what needs to be covered, you get very fast at it. I'm not going to worry about the back. I went off right there. I'm not going to worry about the back. The back is going to be glued. And with this being a dark blue, it's really easy to like have these two colors kind of just blend like the black and the blue and kind of create that shadow. So what I could probably even do is just come through where the white's the worst and just mark it. And you shouldn't be able to tell. Oh, look it, got it right on there. Now if I had a white bee, that would come off. Those are the really bad spots I saw that I really wanted to take care of. Let's fix that guy. Okay, grab my dark here. We're going to come right back through here. and that was wet and I put my hand on it. Alright. Yes, it is pretty cool, huh? It just it's a little time consuming, but 
if you don't have a paint pen, it goes by nice too, and then that way you don't have to sit there and keep. You like painting, you know, and you're like, oh, I get white on the blue, and then you keep going back and forth. So it's kind of just a nice little trick to make it look nice. Okay, let those dry. Um, same thing with this one here. But on this one, I'm going to paint it. This one I got really heavy with. Okay. Just went right over the edges on that one here. The rest of them look great. I didn't do too bad on the rest of them. So just this guy right here, I just kind of got heavy with that white there. I'm just gonna fix that up and then right here, I don't like this. So we're gonna come through here and take care of that too. Okay. All right, let's check on our waves. They look pretty good too. Okay, my favorite part, let's do some outlining. You do have great paint pens. You have some good ones over at the studio. All right, let's get our crabby patty. Not really crabby patty, just kidding. Let's get our crab eyes. Now, if you don't have a steady hand, you can just go like this with the back of your paintbrush like this, and then just come in and just fill in the circle like that. Stay right in those lines for you. Okay. Let me get this guy wet a little bit. Some little lines on them here. Some stuff up white here on the legs. Okay. Just gave them a little detail. Nothing too fancy. The letters I think will leave. And the waves, I think we're gonna leave too. Okay, let's grab our base and I will show you how the whole thing looks. So here's our base. Oh, let me put you guys up just a little bit. And then zoom you out. Okay, here's our base. It's all dry. I just did a roller brush over the top of this with just the regular white acrylic paint. You can see where the letters have been engraved into it, or the, the yeah, like I'm gonna say engraved. It's probably, there's probably a different term for it. But the etching of the letters and the outline is on there for you, so you know exactly where to line it up at. That's why one of, this door hanger in particular would be great for a first time painter. Oh, that's so cute. I don't have any wiggly eyes. So that would be so cute. If I had them, I would do it. That'd be really cute. That'd 
be super cute. You guys, every time I come live, you guys make me think of things I need to, oh, I should probably buy like googly eyes or, oh, like you guys always think of something that maybe I should have in my craft room that I don't normally have in my craft room. <laughs> Makes you laugh. I am fixing this one because I did get out of control with the white again. I went over the edge. I am doing a, that dark blue on this one. I'm going to let him hang out for a minute. Stick into it. Same thing with that guy. And if I'm not getting paint on myself, I am not a good painter. Dollar store has them? Oh, I didn't know that. Our dollar store never has good stuff like that. Our dollar store sucks. drill holes up here at the top. We don't put holes in them because you never know how somebody might want to hang it. Uh, some people staple towards the back. Um, I can show you some. Some of them uh, that we actually have do have holes in the top. Because the, if you hear me yelling, has holes at the top on that one. It would have been really cute if I came in with antique white instead of just regular white. The antique white kind of looks like sand. It just has a little, little more of like a tan hue to it. It would have been cute if I did that instead of the white, but I like how this pops. I wanted, when I pictured this design, I wanted it to be super pop, like the letters to be nice and bright, but not too neon, but still beach theme. Okay, here is my version of the No Crabby Attitude. Woohoo! Goal, I made it into the garbage bag. Awesome. So here's my version of the No Crabby Attitudes. What I could do is drill a hole up here, find center, drill a hole, and then I can stick my antique wire or you can do ribbon depending on how big your holes are you can kind of hang it however you like with whatever you like um let me show you some that i have but i don't know how i've done it i'm gonna move that guy out of the way all right this is still not glued yet because i need to seal it okay here's a good one so this is the Hello Spring Hanger we painted a while back. Okay, so what I did is I took really good super glue and I glued this string on the back 
and then I took extra ribbon that I had and put this over it and I glued that to that. I mean, I could throw this, it's not going anywhere. This has been on a door, I've taken pictures. Um, it's not going anywhere. I mean, I could even try to pull it off and it's not coming off, so. Um, that's how I did that one. If it has holes in it, I don't think I have any that have holes. I usually do it that way because I like the way it looks and then that way I don't put holes in the wood. Um, this one already has holes made into it. When I get this other one glued, I can come back and show you guys how to hang it. Maybe I'll do a video like that in a little bit. Maybe I can try to see if I can get Avery to hold the Nevo or something and we can film that. So. Oh yeah, you could do that too. My letters are sticky because they were wet still when I was trying to put them on there. And then the tape is sticky. Once it dries, it won't be sticky anymore, but because it's all still drying, that's all sticky. Whoa, my chair just broke. That would be very cute. You could add some shells to it. I'm kind of a less is more person, so I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm not going to add anything to it. But you could definitely make it your own. That's why the whole... Ooh, glitter sand. That'd be pretty, huh? Do some sand in between, like maybe up here or something. That'd be cute. Well, I th believe these are on sale right now, so make sure you guys, if you're interested in trying it, go grab them while they're on sale so that way you guys can practice and get one made. Oh, how I glue them. So I use my glue gun and I use Gorilla Wood Glue. I get it from Home Depot. And I just take my glue gun and I glue it right, like right for the A. I would glue right here, right here, and then the bottoms. And then I would just line it up and press it on. Take parchment paper to press it if you need to. You can use super glue too. I, for a while there, I was using um, crazy glue with a K. Um, and then our Walmart just stopped carrying it. So I stopped So I stopped doing that and I just went to, whoa, I am a hot mess today. So then I went to Home Depot and just bought this uh, heavy duty wood glue and then just used a glue gun to do it. So that's what it looks like. I think you can get these on Amazon too. And I use the minis because I use my mini glue gun. And I plug it in for quite a bit and let it get hot. Mine doesn't have an auto turn off, so I let that thing sit and get kind of warm. And then I have to glue kind of fast because it's pretty hot. But I won't glue this until tomorrow. I let it sit for 24 hours after I paint it, and then I go ahead and glue them. You're so welcome. These are also in the Amazon uh, affiliate store too, if you guys are interested. She has those glue sticks in there, and I tell her to add them. And then all the brushes that I used and some of the paint that I used is also in there. You're welcome. Okay, you guys, well, I'm glad that, that I got to paint with you. Um, I might come back tomorrow afternoon for some paint too. I have so many door hangers that I'm so excited to paint. Full, paint. Um, there's a Jeep one calling my name that I really want to get done too, so yeah. All right, guys, everybody have a great rest of your week. Enjoy the short week work week this week. And Lori will not be live tonight. She's not feeling very good, so she is resting at home, but she will be back tomorrow night, so make sure you guys join the text alerts and join our email list to be notified when she goes live. You can text LIVE, L-I-V-E, to 864-465-8401 and join our text alerts to be notified of anybody going live on her Working Moms channel. Mom, are you done? Almost. All right, guys. Okay, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for joining me. Bye, everybody.